this video we will learn how to draw scale bars in Adobe Illustrator. We're going to do a scale bar for two different data types, an image here, shown here on the top and electrophysiological recording shown here on the bottom. Let's do the image first. So I'm going to zoom in, holding the Alt key and spinning my mouse wheel. And then now I'm going to measure the the length of this line. And I want to make sure that I'm in the dimensions of pixels because I'm creating this um, this figure for a PowerPoint slide. So I want to be sure that I'm using the right units. So I'm going to File Document Setup and it and the units are in pixels. So click OK. I'm going to click the Line tool and I'm going to measure the length of this. Um, this ruler. So you, in order to, to draw the scale bar, you have to image the ruler using the same objective and camera settings that you did for the image here on the left. So I'm, I clicked over here, I'm holding my left mouse button, and I'm dragging it over here, and you see that it's roughly 240 pixels long. <clears throat> now, I know that this image is 256 pixels wide, but let me just confirm that. Go over here to the left edge, hold the shift key, go all the way to the right, and you see that little text box on the, the gray text box, it says 256. That tells me that I'm right, it's 256. I'm gonna go down to the calculator, and I'm going to type in, now measure, remember I measured 240 pixels. I wanna draw a scale bar that is 100 micrometers long, so I'm going to take 24 divided by 256 and I'm gonna press equals, and that comes out to 0 0.09735. I'm just going to copy that value. Okay, now I'm gonna draw a line that is as wide as the image on the left. I'm holding the shift key and going all the way to the edge over here, and then press the S button and enter, because now I'm going to scale that accordingly. I'm going to control V to paste that value in here. The scaling is done by percentage, so I need to change this to percentage. So it's a 9.375 and click OK. So that scaled this uh, properly, so that is exactly 100 micrometers. I'm going to hold the Alt key and zoom in here. I'm going to make a specific point here. Notice that the line is right, the, the cap of the line ends right next to the anchor point. So if I click on Stroke and I go over here to Cap, if I click on this, it extends it beyond the line. Now I don't want to do that because that overestimates the, um, the length there. So I'm going to click, make sure it's, it's this end cap all the way on the left. Hey, let me go ahead and type in the text. Uh, so this is 100, it's 100 micrometers, but I'm gonna type in MM because I'm gonna change the font here. So the default is Myriad Pro. I recommend changing this to Arial. And then let's change this to a white fill. And then I'm going to specifically select this M by double clicking until I get it. And then I'm gonna change this to symbol. So now it's micrometer. I'm going to center these two things by holding the shift key and clicking here. So now I have these two selected and I'm going to center align them. And I want to make sure this is also centered aligned. Okay. So let me hold shift and click again to realign this. Okay. I'm going to hold alt key and spin. Now I'm going to move over to electrophysiological data. So I'm going to change the color. I'm going to remove the fill, and then I'm going to change the, the stroke to black. And let me draw a line. And now I'm going to draw the scale bar for this data. So I'm going to, now that I have a line selected, I'm going to go over here to this tick mark, and then click and hold, then hold shift until I reach the anchor point to the bottom tick mark move it over here and then i'm going to click another line and i'm going to draw it from here hold shift key and move it over this way and i want to move this line until it snaps right at the intersection so that it meets right up with the next with this vertical scale bar now i'm going to click the text box i want to make sure i move this back to Arial. change the font back to Arial. And then I'm going to type in the vertical scale. 
0 0.5 microvolts. Change this to symbol. Hold the Alt key and move this over here. And I'm going to change this to 5 seconds. And once I do that, of course, I can remove, I, I can move this over and then select these and move them over, depending on your data type. Okay. All right, the next thing that I want to talk about is if you notice, it, this is not a continuous L. Notice that there's this open gap here. One way to fix that is to click on the direct selection tool, select those two points, hold control and press J. It is important that these two lines meet up perfectly before you do that. So I'm going to control Z. So if I take this line, I want to make sure that when I bring this up, it meets up perfectly so that it says that intersect. If I don't see quite that intersect, I might be something like this and that, that it would not be good. So drag this over till you see the intersect. And now I want to use the direct selection tool to select those two points and hold control and press J. Now, one thing that happens when I do that is it extends this bottom line slightly beyond this anchor point. And so that allows that overestimates the length of this line and the vertical line as well. Now, this error is really small. Just to give an idea of what that measurement is, I'm going to go back to file document setup and change this to points just to, so we can measure what our error would be because of this. Now, this is a one point thickness line. So that extension, that the erroneous extension is point, 0 0.5 points. The width of this object is 62.7996. Let me copy that. Go back to my calculator, type in 0 0.5 divided by 62.79, and that error is really small. It's a 0.7%. That's the error. Now, the thing to keep in mind is 0 0.5 points is actually below the resolution of being printed out on a piece of paper. Um, it's also probably below the resolution of the actual image that I'm drawing. So this, this error is probably not worth worrying about. Um, not to mention that this is, it's better to keep it this way when you're, when you're rescaling objects. I'm going to show you that in a minute. So this becomes a bigger issue if you want to draw a smaller scale bar. So for instance, maybe you want, I'm going to type in S and press enter. Maybe you want a scale bar that is 20% the size of this. So you want this to be 0 0.1 microvolts and one second. Now, I actually don't recommend having a scale bar this small because that actually introduces its own sort of errors and it's kind of useless when it is this small. But if you wanted an error bar this small, now the error becomes a little more substantial, especially if you have a thicker line. So if you have a two point thickness line, that error is now at one point and the width is 12.559. Now if I divide one divided by 12.559, now the error is about 8%. So this actually becomes a big issue. So to fix that, what I recommend is clicking on that object and since we have it joined, um, we're going to break that joint. So I'm going to, you probably have an eraser tool right here. Just click and hold till you get to the scissors tool. And then click on that scissors tool. Okay, now we're back to being broken here. Select these two lines. Click object, expand, fill and stroke. Okay, so now these are exactly the length that they're supposed to. And so what it did is it just changed, converted that line into rectangles. Okay, so I'm going to select those two objects, click left align and bottom line. Now it's perfect. Of course, it's a really tiny uh, scale bar. If you change the scale of this 
data, you must also select your scale bar. And as long as you have it selected, it will uh, change the scale accordingly, and you just need to move these over. Okay. Now, if you do the more exact method like this, you'll notice some complications here. Now that I've scaled it, the, the width of this line is no longer equal, and it kind of looks really strange and unprofessional. So what I want to do is do Control Z. Let's go back to the original. So whenever you have it like this, the better way of scaling is to scale it by a defined amount. So if I'm, I'm going to type S, Enter, and let's do non-uniform. I want to keep the vertical at 100%. And let's say I wanted to scale it by 20% or something. So it's one fifth of the width that it originally was. Click OK. And this is just to exaggerate the effect here. So now I'm going to zoom in. And now I'm going to do the inverted scaling for this uh, scale bar. So I'm going to type in S and Enter. And I'm going to make this 500. Okay, so now the width is the same, although it looks kind of strange. In this case, what I would do, make sure you realign these things. Go to the left and bottom. Oh, to the bottom. Now, in this case, what I would do is I would lengthen this to five seconds. So type in S, enter, and change so the horizontal by 500%. Click OK. Click the selection tool and select both of these objects and align to the left and align to the bottom. Okay, so this, although it's really thick and really small, it is exactly the, the length and width that it needs to be to be the proper scale. So in most cases, unless you have really thick and small scale bars like this, in most cases, it works a lot easier just to have these as lines. And let me show you that. So Control Z, I'm going to go all the way back to the original. Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. Assuming that we don't want a super tiny scale bar. Okay. Now, these are just lines. And so if I hold the Shift key and click over here, I can scale these as much as I want and it keeps the line thickness exactly the same. And it does that only if you type in S, press enter, and do not have these selected here. Okay, then it will keep that as a one point line. Okay, so I recommend in the vast majority of the cases to just keep these as lines because it's just easier that way. Do a center align for that, and let's do a right align for this one. Hold the shift key and align it vertically. Select these two, select these two objects. Click this as the key object and center. Okay, that is how you create scale bars in Adobe Illustrator.